Hi there, my name is Shannon. I am a librarian with Pikes Peak Library District, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own melt and pour hand soaps. Now, melt and pour is the easiest of the soap making methods, and you can find melt and pour soap bases at any craft store or online with services like Amazon and other specialty craft online services. Today, we're just going to be making a simple shea butter hand soap and we're going to give it color and we're gonna talk about putting it into a mold and other things that you can do. Now, I'm going to be using a lot of soap making materials that I have at home, but I'm also going to be showing you ways that you can make these melt and pour soaps with molds and a double boiler or a microwave method without the soap making materials. Let's get started. A bird flew into the house while I was filming this and this has got to go into but yeah it's okay see yeah I know I know there's a bird in the house there's a bird in the house it's okay so the first thing we're going to talk about is finding a melt and pour soap base. So right here, you're gonna see a bunch of different types of bases that you can get. And these bases all have different benefits to them. So something like aloe vera is really soothing on the skin. You use aloe vera when you get sunburns, goat milk, cocoa butter, shea butter, they're all very moisturizing. That's these three right here. And other different soap bases are going to give you different benefits, but you also have your regular white soap base and clear soap base. These soap bases are what you're going to be adding color to, adding scent to, and even adding any exfoliants or other um, additives that are going to help your soap do better things. Um, a lot of the benefits that I am talking about, you can t read about in soap making books like that one, Soap Making the Natural Way, which is available at our library. So we're going to be using a shea butter soap base because of its moisturizing effects. And we're just going to be making a very simple soap. We're going to be doing a bar soap that's like this, where it's got a little bit of a pattern on it. I'm using molds, but you can use other molds at home. Now, all of your soap bases are going to come in some sort of block. This block right here is a shea butter base. It is already set up as a block, but the first thing you're gonna wanna do in order to make it easier to melt is you're going to cut them into smaller blocks. These blocks can be cut using a regular knife, or if you have a soap cutter at home like I do, you can do that, but a simple knife just like this is going to work just fine for you in cutting those blocks up. Cutting the blocks up is going to be your first step and then we're going to talk about the different ways that you can melt your soap. Now with the melt and pour soap base all you need to worry about is melting your soap. There are two ways to melt soap and they'll usually have the instructions on any packaging that you get. The first way is to use a microwave safe container like what the soap blocks are in and to put it into the microwave. For the microwave, you're going to microwave it in 30 second increments and you're going to pull it out, stir it up. This can be a lengthy process. So we really, I don't use it a lot. Instead, what I use is a double boiler, which is what you see next to it this right here. Now I have a double boiler at home because my family likes to cook and do things like fondue. However, if you don't have a double boiler, you can easily make your own by getting a simple pot and some sort of safe glass bowl and putting it on top. Now a double boiler works because you're going to put water in the bottom chamber and you're gonna put your soap base in the top chamber. Then you'll set the, it to boil and it'll start to melt your soap. This is something you will want to keep an eye on and you'll want to stir frequently so that the chunks will get to the bottom and we'll show you how that works. All right, so we're going to be using a double boiler so I'm going to fill the bottom chamber with water and I'm not going to fill it up too much because the, the other pot is going to sit in it. So only about that halfway and so then we're going to set this on the stove and we're going to set it on a medium high heat 
And we're gonna start letting that boil by covering it with a lid. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is the types of molds that you can use and things that you can use around your house. Now, if you're going to be using any regular baking tools or anything like that, you can use something like a loaf pan or even a muffin tray. And these are, make excellent molds, but if you're going to be using them, there are two things you need to remember. It must be nonstick, and before you pour your soap, you need to spray a vegetable spray into these surfaces. Now I'm going to be using these soap molds that I actually have and soap molds like these are silicone, which makes them easier to um, pop the soaps out. But like I said, you don't need to use anything fancy. You can use a muffin tray, a loaf pan. You just need to make sure that you line it with a vegetable spray first. All right, so one of the things we're going to talk about is how you're going to color your soap. Now there are soap dyes that you can get, something that you can buy like this, that's going to give you like different exotic colors. But again, you don't need that. You can use some natural ingredients that you have at home to add some color. Something like curry powder is going to make your soap a nice lovely yellow or tan color. Even ground ginger will give you a tan color or coffee grounds and her cocoa powder can give you a not only an exfoliant with the coffee grounds but give you a nice rich brown color in your soaps now these are all natural ingredients something that this book here talks about to use as colorants but there is also something to keep in mind while you can use something like cinnamon or paprika to color your soaps they can be irritants so you don't want to use these for stuff like face soaps. These would work for hand soaps and in the right quantity. So always, if you're going to be doing something like this, use them in the right quantities that the recipe is calling for. So our soaps have been sitting in here and they've started to melt. You can see that, but there's still some chunks. So we're going to cover it again after a little bit of stirring and we're going to let it do its thing. I'm using a rubber spatula that you can also use some simple um, skewers or other things like that. This is soap, it washes away. Now adding scents to your soaps can be something like infusing some herbs like rosemary or sage into your soaps or you can use something as simple as an essential oil. I have an orange one and a pink lemonade one here um, but we're going to be using orange today with ours. Now it is important that when you're using essential oils that you are uh, making sure you're using some ones that are safe for skin. Some will say not to be used on skin or not to be used around the face or eyes that's something you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of with essential oils. But essential oils are an easy way to incorporate a scent into your soap. Now that our soap is melted, what we're going to do is I'm gonna pour it into another container so that I can add the color and I can add our scent. Now I'm gonna be making a nice orange scented um, soap, so I'm going to pour this in here. And it's going to take all of that soap. We can put that back there, but we're done with this, so we're going to remove it from the heat. Now, for adding color, I'm using a peach colored color here, so I'm going to just spray in a bunch. And we're also going to add in several drops of essential oil. So for essential oil, you are gonna to wanna to aim for 10 to 15 drops and check the scent when you're doing it. Okay, so you'll see that it's kind of gathering there, but we're actually going to mix this up using our rubber spatula. And I can smell that orange scent. And there we have a nice, gorgeous, evenly colored orange soap. 
Now when it comes to preparing any molds like this, if you're using a silicone mold, you're going to want to spray some rubbing alcohol into the molds. Now I've put some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle like this, and you're just going to make sure that you get the bottom. Now the reason why we do this is because it'll help the mold and the soap set in. So that when the soap sets in, there are no dots or holes or anything like that. It kind of prepares the soap to adhere to the mold shape. All right, now that we have our soap colored and scented, we're going to put it in our molds. Now I'm going to use this butterfly mold here because I don't have a lot of soap. And we're going to pour like this. We're going to fill the molds up. Now these are going to make some very lovely hand soaps, but there is some little um, like foam here. What we can do to get rid of that is take the rubbing alcohol again that we use to prepare and we just click, spray, spray, and it gets rid of the soap and it actually allows it to set in the pattern more. Now you'll notice here there's some bits of unmelted soap but that's really not too big of a problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let these sit and harden with the rubbing alcohol they should harden in a few hours. All right so now that our soap molds have had some time to rest we can then take them out of the molds like this and you now have a completed soap. Now this is the mold I used, like I said earlier in the video, you can use something like a muffin tin or a loaf pan as long as you line it with some vegetable um, oil spray and you will be all set. So that is how you use melt and pour soaps to make your own hand soaps. Thank you for joining me this week for this video of teen self-care and we'll see you next time.